Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take another look at the Lorentz factor because we want to get a really good concept, a really good conceptual idea of what the Lorentz factor is and how it affects things. So let's say that we have an object that has a velocity relative to the speed of light equal to zero, which means it's not moving at all. In other words, the velocity in percent of the speed of light is zero. The Lorentz factor will then be one. When the Lorentz factor is 1, that means there's no relativistic effects whatsoever. So kinetic energy is simply 1 half mv squared, just like it is in our everyday world. We don't have to worry about anything. But what if the speed of light begins to become significant, such as 0.05 as a fraction of the speed of light, in other words, 5% of the speed of light. Now you can see that the Lorentz factor now becomes 1.001. .001. When the Lorentz factor is no longer near 1, this is significant, then you can see that there is a significant kinetic energy created by that very high velocity which would go beyond the one half mv squared. It now becomes relativistic kinetic energy. As the velocity of the object increases to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which is 10, 20, 30 percent of the speed of light, notice that the Lorentz factor begins to grow and so that the kinetic energy becomes a significant factor of the rest mass energy. Notice that this is the kinetic energy in terms of the rest mass energy. So this would be 0 0.021 times the rest mass energy or 0 0.091 times the rest mass energy. When the speed gets up to 0.866 times the speed of light, then notice that the that is 86.6% of the speed of light now notice that the Lorentz factor now has doubled. Instead of 1, it now has become 2, which means that the kinetic energy is now equal to its rest mass energy. So the total energy is m sub naught c squared plus another m sub naught c squared equivalent for the kinetic energy. At that point, kinetic energy equals the rest mass energy. And notice, if you look at this graph here, this is a graph of the Lorentz factor as a function of velocity. As the velocity increases, the Lorentz factor increases, and eventually it will exponentially come up to this line where V equals C. Notice that 0.866C, 86.6% of the speed of light, the Lorentz factor now is 2. So this is the rest mass energy, and this then represents the kinetic energy in relative size. Notice when we get up to 0.9, when V is 0.9C, that's 90% of the speed of light, the Lorentz factor is now 2.294. If we get up to 99% of the speed of light, the Lorentz factor is now a little bit over 7. And if, the, if we move at 99.9% .9 of the speed of light, not us per se, but any particle, so to speak, then you can see that the Lorentz factor becomes quite large, 22.336, which means that the kinetic energy is now more than 21 times the rest mass energy. Now, what else can we use the Lorentz factor for as far as intuitive feel for what this is? It's also the time dilation. For example, if an object, if a person at rest relative to the event, if an event is moving past the person at rest and the event is moving really fast, let's say the event is moving at 99% of the speed of light, the time that you'll measure for an event on that object will be seven times the time that you measure when you're at the same location as the moving object or the moving event. If the event is moving at 99.9% .9 of the speed of light, then the time that you measure at rest will be 22 times the time that someone that's moving along with the event will be measuring it. So in other words, the time will, sh will have slowed down on the event by a factor of 22, or in other words, the time that we measure here will be 22 times as long as the time that's measured near when a person is stationary near the event moving past those very high speeds. So this, this what we call Lorentz factor is good to look at various things. We can also estimate how much things shrink by. For example, if a spaceship comes by, it, by us at 99% of the speed of light, it will have shrunk to one-seventh of its normal length in the direction of travel. A person will have gained seven times as much mass moving at 99% of the speed of light and so forth. So the Lorentz factor is a very nice way of getting a feel of what's happening at those relativistic speeds. How much energy it has gained, how, how fast it's moving, how much the time has changed, how much the mass has changed and so forth. So that's how we use the Lorentz factor and you can see how as the speed begins to increase to become in close to the speed of light that the Lorentz factor gets quite large and the relativistic effects become very pronounced. And that's taking another closer look at the Lorentz factor.